Hello and good morning. My name is Mr. Seagull, but you know you can call me Bobby. And I'm your online maths teacher with the wonderful Explore Learning. So let's say good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Seagull. Good morning, Mr. Seagull. Yes, yes, I'm really excited. So I'm here with Explore Learning, and we're all about being fearless maths learners because we want to try and do things that are a bit uncomfortable so that we stretch and grow our brains. And that's what we're all about today. So who am I before we start? So I'm a school maths teacher. I'm also the author of a couple of books. I'm the author of The Life-Changing Magic of Numbers, about how numbers change my life. And hopefully I've shown you through these lessons that numbers can change your life. And I'm also the BBC presenter for the Monkman and Seagull Genius Guide. And I'll tell you more about my series two currently on BBC. So it's Monkman and Seagull's Genius Adventures on BBC Two. So an eye player right now. Pop these back here. So with Explore Learning, we've been doing a scheme called Explore at Home. And we've been keeping education going during these challenging times. And this has been key stage one for ages four to seven. And, and sadly today, it is the final session. So I wanted to say a big thank you to all of you and a goodbye, but we still got the lesson to come, uh, for coming to each of my sessions. Again, on Mondays, we've had Key Stage 1, on Wednesdays, we've had Key Stage 2, and on Fridays, we've had Key Stage 3. But don't worry, you don't have to miss me. You can go to the Explore Learning website, explorelearning.co.uk, and all the previous lessons are there. So all the different topics on measurements, uh, on geometry, on patterns and sequences, you can find it all there. Um, and of course, you can always come back uh, to the website and book a trial uh, with us. Uh, and you get exclusive, um, is it one-to-one -one tuition alongside the live lessons uh, on maths and English in our exclusive members area. So again, go on explorelearning.co.uk and find out more. But of course, uh, we're still on social media. So if you wanna keep in touch with me, go to at explore tutors, so explore learning underscore official, and myself, I'm on Twitter at Bobby underscore Seagull. Uh, I'm also on Instagram, the same thing, and I'm on TikTok <laughs> with the same handle, but also I'll show you more details later, but I'm facebook.com forward slash Bobby Seagull. So facebook.com forward slash Bobby Seagull. Give me a like or follow there, and you'll see all the cool things I do. Obviously maths, but I also do things like geography and history on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 10.45. So get involved. If you love my learning, I'm always doing lots of different types of sessions. So facebook.com forward slash Bobby Seagull. Okay, I think it's time for hashtag Maths with Bobby. And today's session is gonna be so exciting. It's gonna be so exciting because it's about problem solving, but in a way that you've perhaps never seen before. And we're gonna be traveling back in time for today's class. We're gonna be traveling back in time and I'll tell you more about that in a second. So before we do that, I think it's time for our maths wrap, as it were. We know this. So if you're new and you've never seen this before, people often come to me and say, Mr. Seagull, I haven't got a maths brain. I can't, I can't do maths. And like the show, Britain's Got Talent, people have an X. They said, I can't do maths. But I say, yes, I can do maths. So this is what it is. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. Let's do that again if you're new. So arms crossed. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. Stormzy, eat your heart out. Mr. Seagull and Explore Learning, we can do maths. Okay, today's session. It is so exciting. So we're gonna start the lesson and it's all about problem solving, working through a series of different problems to get to a final place today. So I'm going to make a start on the lesson. So are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? I think I should move this board out of the way before we do that. Move it out of the way. So again, you've got all the details here. I'll bring it back up towards the end. So here we go. Here we go. I'm very excited. Three. Lights are on. The cameras are rolling. 
Again, we're on social media at Bobby underscore Seagull. Send us pictures of yourself enjoying the lesson or facebook.com forward slash Bobby Seagull. Three, two, one, let's, let's roll. Okay, so today's lesson is about something that's very topical. It's problem solving. We're going to look at it in terms of an important context. So, you get my chalk out. So recently on TV, you would have seen something called VE Day. VE Day. Do you know what that is? VE Day. VE Day. Does anyone know what VE Day was? So if you're saying it's to do with the war, it is. So VE Day stands for Victory in Europe Day. And recently, on the 8th of May, 2020, it was the 75th anniversary of the celebrations. And 75, we do 2020, take away 75, you actually get 1945. So on the 8th of May, 1945, was when we celebrated the end, or commemorated the end of the war, end of World War II. Britain, the Allied forces against Nazi Germany, and uh, the other people in that side. So I'm going to read you a bit of context for today's lesson. Let me get my book here. Let me read you a bit of context. I'm going to bring you an image. I'm going to bring an image for you. So you can see an image then. I'll tell you more about this. In January 1945, as the Second World War was drawing to a close, 9,000 people worked at a single site on a single project. In the early 1970s, apart from the people directly involved, there was still practically, practically nobody he knew about the work or its importance. And what I'm talking about is what you can see, that image there. That is Bletchley Park. And actually a stately home located um, close to England's north, south and east-west main railway lines. And this is Bletchley Park, the home of the British government and cipher school. And these people included, you can see the picture there, linguists, so people with language specialism, crossword experts, engineers and people like us, mathematicians. And I'll tell you why they're important. So the people you see there are retired veterans, people that during the war worked at Bletchley Park, cracking codes. And they were cracking codes to help the war effort against Nazi Germany. And I'll tell you why it was so important, and I'll read this for you now. With an enormous combination of intelligent guesswork, mathematical analysis, resilience to failure, and mechanical power, not to mention human power, the British were able to intercept means catch, and decipher means crack a large portion of German radio traffic. And this intelligence, historians believe, shortened the war by up to two years. So World War II ended in 1945. But historians think without these mathematicians, engineers, language specialists, crossword experts, the war would have ended maybe two years later. So thank you to these mathematicians at Bletchley Park. So that's where we're heading today. They're going to be heading to World War II because you are going to help us crack codes so that we can help Britain with the war effort. So we're going to travel back in time. We're going to travel back in time. So we're going to travel back in time to 1940s. Unspecified. I can't tell you the exact date because it's all top secret. But for that, we're going to travel. We're going to have to get into the right outfit. So let's see. Um, what do I need to get there? I'm going to change my outfit. I'm going to put um, a jacket on. I'm going to put a smart jacket on to fit in. I'm going to put a jacket on. Right, let's have a look. Um, so, you know, I want, to, I want to look the part. When I turn up in 1945, you know, if you want, if you want to get something smart, um, okay, I'm going to put this jacket on. Do I look like I fit into 1945? I've got my jacket on. What else do I need? Um, I think I need an umbrella. I think I need an umbrella, there we go. Got a jacket, yeah, okay. I look like I could be working in Bletchley Park. What else do I need? I'm gonna, I need a, I'm gonna get a hat, a hat to get into the area. So I look like I'm part, and I've got a smart umbrella. I've also got some glasses, just in case 
you know, we're going to be spies. We're going to be careful. So I've got some glasses on. Um, and I've got a, I don't smoke, but I've got a pipe just to fit in, just in case anyone's like, are you from here? I'm like, yeah, I'm from 1940. Okay, so are we ready? We're going to travel back in time. We're going to travel back in time. But this is one the parents and carers have recognized. We're going to have to get a time machine. So this is Back to the Future. We're going to get in a DeLorean car, a DeLorean car. We're going to travel back in time, 75 years and beyond. But to do that, we need to get the car, the car to a certain speed. So it's called the DeLorean car, and we need to get to a certain speed. I need you to tell me that speed. So for that speed, for this car, it has to go at, you have to add this up for me, okay? 50, okay? 50. Write it down. Plus 20. Plus 10. Plus 8. What was that? What was that? And that's the speed we need to get to. So 50 plus 20 plus 10 plus 8. And if you've got 88 miles an hour, get in the car, hop on board. I'm gonna put my glass on, it's gonna get a bit, we're gonna get a bit quick here. Are we ready? Are we ready to move back in time? Okay, okay, 50, we're around 70 miles, 80 miles, 88, and We are now in the 1940s, we're back in World War II. And I can tell we're there because my phone signal doesn't work because they don't have Wi-Fi here. So I'm gonna put my, uh, okay, we have to be careful now because we don't want people to work out that we're from the future. We're from 2020, but no one knows that. So we're down Bletchley Park. We're in Bletchley Park with all the code breakers. And I'll tell you what, we're on a mission. We need to help crack the codes so that we can help end World War II. And you know what we found? We found this. The Nazi Germans have left this behind. They left a suitcase. And inside this, they have plans on what they're gonna do in World War II. So if we can help crack the code here, there's three numbers, if we can help crack it, we can help the war effort. But some of you thinking, Bobby, why don't you, why don't you get like a hammer and open it? Why don't you break it open? If we do that, all the documents will be destroyed. So we have to be very careful. Okay, so we've got this. We're gonna try and work out the three codes to get. We need to get them. Okay, so let us, let's begin. Hopefully you've been paying attention to all the previous classes because lots of knowledge from that will come into play. Okay, so we're gonna be careful here. So make sure, just check that no one else is watching this. Apart from your, if your parents or carers, we need mathematicians here. We need people that are ready, yeah? Okay, so firstly, a few calculations to get us warmed up. A few calculations to get us warmed up. I'm gonna take my hat off for a second, yeah? A few calculations. Okay, so the first one is, ready? 17 plus three. Okay, next one, four plus 16. The next one, eight plus 12. And the last one, 10 plus 10. Did you notice something there? So I said, what was it? 17, okay, I'm gonna keep my voice down occasion just in case. 17 plus three, I said four plus 16. And then I said, what else did I say? I said eight plus 12. And then I said, 10 plus 10. Do you notice? They all add up to 20. Because that's where we've come from, 20, 20. And these are all about number bonds. Number bonds, because they're all different combinations that add up to 20. And I'll tell you what, number bonds are important because bonds are about we've got to stick together. You and, you and I. All of us today at Explore, we've got to stick together to crack through the codes. You ready, yeah? Okay. I'm going to give you a, a little problem to start with that you're going to have to think about. So, do you know the numbers? All the numbers, if you write them out, 
if you write them out. It's going to be a little task and occasionally, if you want to work things out, press the pause button. Press the pause button and come back. Because then you can try the answer yourself. So, in order for us to move on to the next section, I want you to work out a little puzzle for me. So, you know when you write down the numbers? One. Yeah? O N E, yeah? Or two, for example. P W O. In the English language, there's only one number. If you write it out, all the letters are in alphabetical order. Alphabetical order. So, for example, here, N is before O, so that doesn't work. Here, T, no, uh, W, O, O is before, uh, T is before W, which is fine, but W is not before O, so that doesn't work. So, I want you to try writing the numbers, do three, four, five, six, seven, eight, keep going, and tell me which letter or which number are all in alphabetical order. Off you go. You can press pause if you want. Okay. You thought about it. Let's go through it. So you want all the letters in alphabetical order. There's only one number in the whole English language that does that. So let's try three. T H R E E. Uh, T is not before H, so that doesn't work. How about four? F O U R. F is before O, good. O is before U. Oh, does that even work? A R S T U. Hmm, that doesn't quite work. So your challenge is, can you actually find? Oh, the challenge is slightly different. Again, I think it's the pressure of being in the war situation. It's made me think of something unusual. The challenge was, be careful, is to find a number, a number, where all the number of letters adds up to the number itself. So here there was three numbers for one. For two, there's two numbers. For three, there is three, there's actually five. And four, there are four. And you know the puzzle I did set you, so there are four. The puzzle I did set to you. Actually there is, that's why it's related. If you go to 40, I was a bit mean with the question. If you go to 40, F is before O, which is before R, which is before T, which is before Y. So you had to go all the way to 40. So that was a bit of a, a tricksy little problem. But 4 is the question where the letters match the numbers. So 1, 2, 3, 4, which is 4. Okay, let's move on now. Let's move on now. Let's move on. So, we need to start building up some of the codes. We need to start building up. We need three numbers for the code. So, we're going to look at equivalent fractions. Let's look at some of these riddles. Equivalent fractions. So, I have an apple. I found these, um, what have I found? I found some instructions for us. I have an apple. Portions 10. But only half do I want. So listen to that again. I have an apple. Portions 10. But only half do I want. How many portions is that? I have an apple, portion's 10, and only half, half of 10 is 5. Okay, good, we've got the apples correct. Okay, the next one is, I'm just checking yours here. Okay, I have a chocolate, blocks 20, but only half do I want. I have a chocolate, blocks 20, but only half do I want. What does that mean? So chocolate's 20, only half. Half of 20 is 10, 10. And what do you notice about those two? What do you notice? They're, they're the same, aren't they? They're both the half. They're both the half. And you can write a half as one over two. So they're equivalent fractions. So now it's time for a question that will give us a clue. So the answer to the numerator, the top part, will give us the first number we need. The first number we need for our code. Remember this? We need to unlock this to find some important information that the Germans, Nazi Germans are storing. And if we get this, we can speed our war efforts up, okay? 
Listen up. I have a pizza, slices eight, but only quarter do I want. I have a pizza, slices eight, but only quarter do I want. You got that? Okay, let's go through that. I have a pizza, slices eight, but only quarter do I want. So you can imagine it like, oh, it's like a pizza. With eight slices, a quarter is two slices. And if you've got two slices, that's it. We need this number. So that's gonna be our first code. So we got it, yeah? Our first number. First number for the code cracking today. So we're gonna keep that number. And you know the two out of eight, we can simplify that if we wanted to, but we'll keep it as two out of eight. So I'm telling you that's the code we need. It's actually, you can see, two out of eight slices is the same as one quarter of the pizza. It's the same as one quarter of the pizza. So we've got the first code, good. Okay, we're progressing well. I think we're doing well because I feel as if at Bletchley Park, no one's quite worked out who we are. So let me just quickly put my hat, just uh, glasses, just to walk around here carefully. Okay, okay, I think we're good. Ah, I found our next puzzle, our next challenge. It's to do with, it's to do with the time. Time is very important here at Bletchley Park because we're under pressure. We're under pressure, the team are under pressure to get things right, to get things right. So we're gonna look at, so this here, it says it's half past 10. It's half past 10, but let's look at some, let's look at some other times. We need to get another code. We need to get another code for us. Okay, you're still with me here. We're still, we're on this effort here. So, I'm gonna do a few things before I, I give you a problem. So the first one is, how do you write the time quarter past three? How do you write that time quarter past three? How do you write that? I'm gonna put it up on the clock here. Quarter past three. Quarter past three. How do you write that? So obviously imagine you're writing it down on a piece of paper telling someone, meet me at quarter past three. Meet me at quarter past three. That's roughly quarter past three. So you'd write three, 15, quarter past three. What about writing half past 12? How do you do that? Half past 12, half past 12. How do you write that? Half past 12. There you go. That would be 12, 30, 12, 30. What about 10 minutes past five? How would you write that? 10 minutes past five. 10, ten minutes past five. There you go, five, ten. 10 minutes past five. 10 minutes past five. So, we need to get a second item, a second number for a code. We're gonna get it, okay. But for this, there's a sequence of four times. I'm gonna give you four times. I want you to write them down. And then the answer to the fifth question, the first number, the first number we write down. So essentially, there's four things I'm gonna tell you four times. Tell me the next time. And we need the first number in that time. Okay, so are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, write this down for me. Quarter past two, just checking, quarter past two, write that down as a number, quarter past two. Now write down two, 45, two, 45. Now write down, 3.15, write down 3.15. And the last one, write down quarter to four. Quarter to four. Work out the next one for me. I need the first number. Right, work out the next one. Have a look. Okay, so that's, you could have paused it and let's come back. Let's look at it. So it was quarter, past two, which is two, 15. 
The next one was uh, 245. 245. And then after that we had 315. And the next one I said was quarter to four. So that's 345. So what was the next one? What did you spot? Can you see the time? It's going up in half an hour each time. So the next one would have been quarter past four. 415. 415. Did you get that? I'm gonna I'm gonna give that to you if you didn't. But it's the four we need. So we've got two numbers. We've got two numbers. And again, we're getting the numbers as we're trying to crack this. We're trying to crack the code here to open up the, the secret information. We found this suitcase. We retrieved the suitcase and we know it's got important information that help us win the war. Okay. Okay. I think we're doing well. I think we're doing well. How are you feeling? Okay. So now we've got a few tasks to keep us going through. A few tasks to keep us going through. Because... Um, we're not going to get, I have a feeling here, people are bletching past, they're, they're looking at us and they're going, are you from 1940s? You look like you might be from the, you know, even your hairstyle, they might be thinking you know, you're from the, from the future. So we've got to be careful that we don't get caught out. We don't get caught out. So I'm going to put my hat back on, put some glasses. Um, I'm going to walk around here. Oh, hello, hello. I'm from 19, yes, I am from 1940. I was born in 1920. Make sure you've got an age that makes sense. Hello, hello. So, I've got a little problem just to keep us going, just to keep us going while we're waiting because we've got, we've got a, a patterns and sequences challenge. But we need to go through a couple of items. Okay, I've got a few things here. A few items here. We've got a box here. Have a look. A small box. I'm going to put that. Can you see this over here? A box there. I'm going to put that box there. What else do we have? We have another box, a red box. I'll put that there for you. Is that visible? Is that visible? Here it is. Yeah. And then we've got, what else we have? A pack of cards. A pack of cards, I'll put it there. And then finally, we have a chess box, quite a big chess box. So, have a look. We've got a chess box. A pack of cards here, a red box and a black box. For us to move on, there's someone in the canteen. They're suspicious if we're from this time. And they said, can you put these um, in order of capacity? From the smallest capacity to the largest one. And they're doing this just quickly to check that we are from this period. Can you do that quickly for me? In capacity, order these from the smallest to the largest. And then hopefully they'll let us get our lunch and we can move on. Come on. Smallest to largest capacity. Okay, what do you think it is? Okay, let's go through it. And then hopefully we can keep moving on. So the smallest capa capacity is like almost to do with volume. How much space is there inside? So I said the smallest to the largest. Let's, let's, let's find out. So the pack of cards, they're the smallest. They're the smallest. And the next one is this little box here. That's the second smallest. So that's the second one. And the third one is this red box here, this red box. And the largest capacity is this chess box. So I put that there. I think that's it. I think we've got away. They were suspicious that we weren't from here, but they've seen that we've ordered the capacities. It's good, that's good. Let's go back towards, let's go back to the room where we're trying to do the code cracking. Oh no, someone else thinks we're not from here. Someone else wants to ask us a question before we go back into our code room. And what are they asking us? So they're saying, I'm describing a shape and they want us to tell the shape very quickly. So they say, four sides have I, all the same length and size. What am I? Four sides have I, all the same size and length. What am I? What shape is that? Four sides have I, all the same size and length. What am I? So actually, I think what they're asking for is something that looks a bit like this. It's a square, it's a square. Obviously you can tilt the square, but it's this. 
Let me know if you think there are other shapes that meet that criteria, but I think they're looking for a square. Okay. Okay, I think, I think we're gonna we're gonna keep moving on. We're gonna keep moving on. Um, I think we need to get one more code, one more code. We've got two and four. We need one more number. Okay. So now we're into patterns and sequences. So that's gonna help us. It's gonna help us get the code for this. Patterns and sequences. So quickly, just get a quick warm up. So remember we're 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 the spies. So left ear, right ear, and look. Left ear, right ear, and look. What do you think will come next in that pattern? I think you got it. It was going to be left ear, wasn't it? Because it went left ear, right ear, and look. Left ear, right ear, and look. Left ear. That was it. That was it. Okay. Let's look at some of the number sequences. Let's look at some of the number sequences that we have here. So I'm going to say them out to you and I want you to tell me the next one. Write it down as well. So it's two, then four, then six, then eight. What's after that? It's 10, isn't it? It's 10. It's essentially the two times table. How about this one? Starting on two again. We go to five, then eight, then 11. What's happening this time? What's next? Fourteen, good, it's fourteen. It's fourteen, excellent. How about this one? Thirty, then twenty-five, then twenty, then fifteen. What's happening here? Thirty, twenty-five, 20, 15. We're getting smaller. It's going down in fives. So that's 10. It's going down in fives. Can you see that? Okay. I think this is the last bit. This is the last bit that we need to get. So you need to work out for me this number and then we can add it to the pattern we need to unlock that suitcase. Okay. Let's have a look. So this is the pattern that we have. So 19. 16, 13, and 10. Have a think, tell me, what is it? 19, 16, 13, 10. We need that final number. So is it going up? No, nope. it's going down. It's going down in threes, threes, threes. It's going down in threes. I think it's a seven. I think it's a seven. I think you're right. Yeah, you think it's a seven? So let's add that. Let's add that to it. So we've got we've got three numbers. Good. Well done. Well done. We're doing really well. We're doing really well. So we're gonna have a look. This this is really important at Bletchley Park. We have to add value. Because there are some really smart people. There are people that are linguists, experts in language, crossword experts. There are people that are engineers, mathematicians, brilliant minds, and you're with that. You are part of the brilliant minds explore that are helping at Bletchley Park in the war effort. Okay, so we've got this now. 742. 742. Let's see. Let's see if it unlocks it. 742. It's not it's not unlocking. I thought. Why is it not unlocking? We, we got all the we got it all correct. Ah I know why. I know why. Whoop, someone's coming. I can hear someone. Let me just pretend. Um I don't smoke, but just pretend so they think I'm. You know, like Sherlock Holmes, I'm gonna pretend I'm smoking. Yeah, sorry, so I'm having um, I'm just uh, on a break. They mustn't know that we're trying to crack it as well. So I want to crack it, but I want to do it quickly. Okay, so, so, I think I know what's wrong. So you know, with codes, one, two, and three. If someone said you got the numbers one, two, and three. They could be in any order, couldn't they? It could be one, three, two. It could be, what else could it be? It could be two, one, three. It could be two, three, one. Or it could start with, what else could it start with? It could start with three. And it could also go three, two, one. So can you see, 
these are the same three numbers but in different orders. So the same three numbers but in different orders. So why don't you, with that, the 742, write down all the different orders it could be. They call combinate. So can you do that for me? Write down all the different orders. Write down all the different orders for me. And then we'll try them out. Write them out. Okay. Let's write them out for me. Okay. I'm going to start with the smallest number. Two, four, seven. Then there's two, seven, four. What else do we have? Uh, then we'll start with four, uh, four, two, seven. Then we've got four, seven, two. What else do we have? We've got seven, two, four, and seven, four, two. So, so far, we've got six different ways of writing it out. So far, we've only tried the seven, four, two. We know it didn't work. Let's try the other ones. Let's try them out. Okay, this is it. That's what we came here for. Seven. So we've got two, four, seven, two, four, seven. Nope, that's not working. How about we try two, so that's not working. Let's try that one. That's not working. We know that doesn't work either. Let's try two, seven, four. Two, seven, four. Nope, that's not working either. Ah, we need this to work. How about four, two, seven? Four, two, seven. I hope we didn't make a mistake in any of those questions. Four, two, seven. Oh my gosh, it worked. It was 427. It was 427. I've got it. I've got all the documents. The information, we're going to pass this to our team and it's going to help us save the war. We're going to help. We've done it. Can you believe it? Well done. Be quiet though, but give yourself a pat on the back. We've cracked the code. We've cracked the code. Let's find out what happens. Let's find out what happens. Well done, team. Well done, team. I'm hearing good news. The information that we sent has helped speed up the war. And do you know what? We've won the war because of you. Your efforts at Bletchley Park have helped solve the codes, have helped those codes. Well done. And do you know what they're giving you? Let's see if I can find it. You're being given a medal. You're being given a medal for your efforts in cracking the war efforts. Or cracking the war codes, rather. So there you go. Put your neck out. Come on. I'm going to give you the... There you go. There you go. Well done, team. We've done it. We've helped, we've helped save the war because we've cracked codes at Bletchley Park. You've all done a brilliant job. Done a brilliant job. Well done. I think it's time for us to travel back to 2020. Don't you think? Yeah, we're going to go back to the modern... We're going to go back to the modern times. We've still got... We still got some more messages because I'm really pleased we won the war and we cracked the code. But I want to. I feel like I'm missing a few things. I feel like I'm I'm missing some chocolate bars in the 2020s. I feel like I'm missing my TV series Monkle and Seagulls Genius Adventures. I want to go and watch it. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go in time. I put my normal outfit back on because I want to look as if I'm uh, uh, from 2020 again. Okay, where's my nose? People can be suspicious if I'm wearing clothes in the 1940s. I'm going to put my waistcoat back on. So are you ready, yeah? We're going to get back in the car, in the time machine car. We're going to go to 2020. And do you remember the speed that the car has to go? Because it's a DeLorean car, a back to the future car. We're going to go back to the future. So are you ready? Are you ready to travel back? Okay, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Okay. So we're going to get in the car. I'm going to put my glasses on. My glasses. I can find my glasses. Okay. Are we going to be fine without the glasses? I think we'll have to be. Okay. So, let's get in the car. We're going to go to 50 miles. 70. 80. 88. Shh. Oh, I think. Are we back? Are we back? My phone reception is working. I think we're back. Oh, okay. I can speak loudly again. We're back in 20. 20. We've done it. We've done it. And you crack the codes 
you were a brilliant problem solvers. Well done. You stuck through. We did the different challenges, the different problems, and we made it. We're back in 2020. Uh, and, you know, we heard great news uh, about World War II. It ended a couple of years early because of problem solvers and code breakers like you at Explore Learning. Because you are fearless. Okay. So now it's time for the last key messages. Before we do that, before we do that, I want to... Um, Tell you about thoughts of Mr. Seagull. We know this, we have this um, every session that we do. Um, and again, I always post this on my Twitter, on my Facebook, uh, positive ways to think about your life. So let's, firstly, let's, let's calm back down because we've got really excited about solving the codes and being problem solvers. So put your feet uh, shoulder width apart. Take a deep breath in, all the way to the bottom of your lungs. Hold it and breathe out. Okay, take a deep breath in again. Hold it, and one more time. Take a deep breath in for five. Hold it for a couple, and breathe out. I feel a lot calmer. Okay, so recently it was something called Thank a Teacher Day in the UK. So we thank teachers like myself. And obviously we depend on you students. Uh, recently, I actually won uh, Celebrity Mastermind. So it's a quiz show. Um, that I won, and I won on a topic, uh, England at Football World Cups. So the Football Association, who are the main organisation for football in England, they invited me to take part in a quiz against England's manager. Who's England's manager? Do you know that? It's Gareth Southgate, and he wears a waistcoat, and that's why I wear a waistcoat as well. So Gareth Southgate, I took part in a quiz against him, and guess who, who won? Who beat Gareth Southgate? I beat Gareth Southgate. I beat Gareth Southgate in a quiz about England. But I got to ask him a question about advice for school children. And have a listen. I think today's thoughts for Mr. Seagull are going to come from Gareth Southgate, our England manager. And let's have a look, if I can get this up here. Can I, can I ask first? There we go. Bobby's going to go first. Oh, Bobby. So actually, Gareth, in, in school when I teach, I used to wear a jacket and tie. But after I saw you inspiring the nation, actually in school, I normally wear a waistcoat and tie. <laughs> I call myself Gareth Seagull. Um, what would you tell children about trying to be their, the best that they can be and inspire them? There's a lot of children sometimes in school, whether it's maths or English, they often sort of cap their capability and say, oh, Mr. Seagull, that, that's a limit of my potential. But you are a lot about actually with hard work, effort, training and mindset, you can be the best you can possibly be. What would you say to young children, whether they want to be footballers or yeah. academics or anything in life they want to be? Well, uh, I think you've, you've answered some of it in the question really Bobby in that um, you, there's no limit to what's possible for people and very often we put a limit on ourselves so and I guess if I think back to things like maths that I wasn't particularly great at um, but you've got to just try and not focus on where you are compared to other people but where you are and how you can improve yourself so you're, you're, you're if you want competing against yourself and just constantly trying to improve because if you're trying to compare yourself with other kids who are really good at a subject, then that can be quite dispiriting, can't it? So um, I, I think probably make, making sure that you're the best version of yourself that can be would be my advice. So thank you, Gareth. So England manager, Gareth Southgate, was speaking to me, is giving you advice. And the advice today is about be the best version of yourself. Try not to compare yourself to others. Always think, can I be better than I was before? And again, we have ups and downs. Some days we're not as good as we want to be, but the aim is if we can keep on trying to improve on the whole. And if you enjoy my thoughts on Mr. Seagull, if you go to YouTube, I've got a talk on the magic of maths. So if you type Bobby Seagull, TED Talk, maths, like that, you'll find me wearing my waistcoat like Gareth Seagull, talking about why all of us can love maths. Honestly, you love it. 16 minutes of fun, joy, and positivity about mathematics. So before we come on to the final messages, I want to tell you a few things from my side. So the first one is this. Um, if you use Facebook, which most of you are probably, if you're watching this, some of you are watching on YouTube, I have a YouTube channel there, Bobby Seagull YouTube channel. But if you're on Facebook, can you go to facebook.com? Do it now, do it now for me. Open up a separate window. Open up a separate window and go to facebook.com forward slash Bobby Seagull. Give it a like or a follow. 
and you'll find all my educational updates, my maths projects, work I do with Explore Learning, and even other fun stuff, like on Tuesdays and Thursdays, for example, um, I do uh, a history class. Let me in fact change it. I think I've got Tuesday, uh, let's put history here. There we go, look. Action, editing and action. Tuesday, there we go. Tuesday and Thursday, not Tuesday and Tuesday. You can't do two things at the same time. So Tuesdays at 10.45, I do fun geography classes. I've done lessons on Brazil. I've done lessons in China. We uh, learn about the history, the culture, learn how to count to five and even do a dance from that country. And then every Thursday at 10.45, I do history classes. We've done things like uh, the Tudors, Henry VIII. Uh, we've looked at the ancient Greeks, uh, their philosophy. Uh, we've even looked at uh, recently, what have we done? Uh, the Aztecs. So again, come along on my Facebook page. I post all this information for you. So facebook.com forward slash Bobby Seagull. Another thing I post about is, remember I mentioned I did a quiz book with this person, uh, Mr. Monkman. I have a TV series called Monkman and Seagull's Genius Adventure. This is my second series, second series. Um, and I'd love to show you a clip of it. It's on Monday nights at nine o'clock and it's an iPlayer. It's an iPlayer currently. So let me find uh, the clip for you. Let me find a clip for you. So this is a clip for episode number two. Next time. There it is. There's the rocket. Woo! As the Industrial Revolution gathers pace, Britain takes to the rails. Stevenson's rocket returns to Rain Hill. Yes. The world's biggest and most luxurious ocean liner affords us the promise of global travel. Ultimately, the world underwent what's now described as the first period of globalization. And Monkman and Seagull get fired up by the achievements of one of the world's greatest scientists. So would you say Humphrey Davy is almost like the Ed Sheeran of science? Who's that show? Who is... Who is Ed Sheeran? So there you go. So that is... Um, Monk and Seagull's Genius Adventures. If you go to BBC iPlayer, you can find uh, all the episodes there. Uh, they're nine o'clock on Mondays, but again, iPlayer because it is quite late. But again, if you go to my facebook.com forward slash Bobby Seagull, I always post the information there. And the final thing is uh, on Saturdays, so there would have been the Saturday gone by, uh, 23rd of March, 23rd of May rather, I had a quiz. And again, there'll be one in the future, the 30th of May, uh, there'll be one on the 6th of June, so every Saturday, usually 5 or 6 p.m. But again, check my Facebook or my Twitter, um, at Bobby underscore Seagull, or Instagram, uh, tag me in your stories. Uh, and I do a quiz every Saturday, a family quiz, with um, a picture round, a primary school round with maths questions, like explore questions, um, a charades round or an act round, a music round, and a sing-along. We've done cool sing-alongs. We've done uh, even things like Frozen. You like Frozen. We did a Frozen sing-along. So there you go. So again, please do make sure you follow me on Twitter at facebook.com forward slash Bobby Seagull for more of my updates. Um, and today is, we're going we're gonna to go back to the main theme now. So it is come to the end of uh, the problem solving class. Again, we had a great session. We went to uh, Bletchley Park where we, where we got away with being uh, a code cracker. And then because of that, we cracked the codes. We cracked the code. We eventually got it. Um, and we helped win the war. And all of you got given a medal for your efforts. You got given a medal for your efforts. Um, so this is the last session for Key Stage 1. Again, there's a session for Key Stage 2 on Wednesday, and a final session for Key Stage 3 on Friday. I want to say a big thank you to all my Key Stage 1 people, ages 4 to 7, because you've been brilliant. You've been really working hard. You've been sending you, me your videos, images uh, of studying hard in these classes. Um, and you can always, you know, you don't have to miss me, as well as going to my Facebook page uh, to see my other videos. You can also go to the Explore Learning website, explorelearning.co.uk, and it's got all the maths lessons there that we've done before, all the um, seven previous weeks. Um, and you can, obviously, you can come and book a free trial um, at Explore Learning, and then members will get one-to-one -one tuition uh, alongside live lessons on maths and English in our exclusive members area. So please do have a look at that. So again, I, I'm Bobby Seagull and I've been with Explore Learning. I love Explore because they are about being fearless learners, about trying to do something in maths, maybe making a mistake, but always thinking, yes, we're going to be fearless. We're going to keep trying. Like the code cracking today, the problems are we're going to keep going. So I think that's, that's come to the end.
So I'm, I'm, I'm sad, but I'm also excited because I know that I'm going to continue to see you guys. You're going to follow me on Facebook and you're going to, we're going to work and explore because with the fearless attitude, we can do anything we want. As Gavin Southgate said, don't compare yourself to others, but your potential is limitless. So have that positive attitude. So it's time for our final, our final one for this Key Stage 1 series. So you know what people do? They're going to do it three times. They're going to come up to me and say, I can't do maths. They're going to say that. I can't do maths, but we know what we're going to say to them. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. Two more times for me. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. The final time. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. Yes, I can do maths. All of us can do maths. Thank you so much. I'm Bobby Seagull. I'm with the wonderful Explore Learning and we are fearless learners because we all believe that we can do maths. Thank you and see you all very, very soon somewhere. Thank you. Goodbye.